Just want to give a quick thanks to the Tier 5 channel members and patrons. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Sergeant Puma, Cat Crab Lobster, and Duck Machine. Thank you very much for the support. It is much appreciated. Shots fired. Written by Al Spordo. Just sit tight, Lieutenant. And be calm. This isn't a court martial. We just need to get our facts together here. General Eric Whittaker tried to calm the obviously worried young woman down. It wasn't every day a diplomatic meeting went so terribly wrong as to nearly start a war. But as of yet, nobody knew why the Kral ambassador started screaming in obvious distress, struggling to breathe. And even as he started choking for air, his entourage started coughing and turned green themselves. They barely managed to extricate the comatose ambassador to their ship in time to save his life. But the ambassador still hadn't come out of his coma yet. The Krell naturally assumed that it was a chemical attack, and since the humans in the room were unaffected, blame fell squarely on them. Certainly the Krell were paranoid enough to jump to the conclusion that it had to be the humans, and that the incident had to be deliberate. Only the Krell's sense of honor had stayed their hand, and given the humans some time to investigate the matter. Young Lieutenant Yvette Colson was certainly torn off about it, for she had been assigned to handle the security arrangements. She nodded nervously and replied, Yes, sir, I'll try. Good, the general began. Now take me through your security arrangements and anything you might have discovered. Yes, sir, she began. First, we chose the diplomatic station orbiting Jut 2 for the meeting. It was on the edge of Kral space and very out of the way choice. We did the usual sweeps for weapons and sabotage, but that was largely a formality. The diplomatic station had been under constant control since it was built. Nonetheless, everything was by the book, sir. We checked every millimeter of that station, then a second team led by Lieutenant Teller conducted their own search, and likewise found nothing. I have hollow logs of the entire sweep, sir. Good. It seems unlikely anything was there already then, the general replied. The diplomatic attaché sitting beside him seemed rather less convinced of that. But then again, the diplomatic service never had a high level of confidence in military competency. As far as the diplomatic service was concerned, every marine officer was a jawhead ground pounder in disguise. But the attaché nonetheless remained silent. My thoughts exactly, sir. But I don't see how anything could have gotten in either. We checked the diplomats on both sides thoroughly and the crowd even started getting testy because of our paranoia, Yvette answered. The general pondered that a moment. What about the Grishu? They have personal stealthing fields and don't like either the Krell or us. They'd love to start a war between us. We thought of that, sir. Just before the diplomats arrived, we started a dust-up, you know, putting a small amount of specifically marked silica dust in the air circulation system. If a stealth field was around, the dust would disappear off the internal scanners when across the stealthing field, and we'd know the stealth Grisu was around. Nothing came up. So, no weapons on board before the meeting. No way the diplomats could have brought a weapon of their own, and no way someone could have used a stealth field inside the station. This is quite a mystery, Lieutenant. The general rubbed his chin thoughtfully. You are dismissed for now, but I want those hollow logs sent to my office immediately. Yes, sir. The young lieutenant saluted crisply and turned on her heels and vanished with a sigh of relief. The attaché, a mid-level bureaucrat from a delegation foisted on him by a diplomatic service, decided to chime in. Whittaker couldn't even remember the guy's name, but his pencil neck meddling had already grown tiresome enough. But you're just going to believe her. She's probably just trying to cover her own rear for security mistake, the attaché said happily. You should put her up on trial for her incompetence. Mind your place, delegate. This is a military investigation, and I will conduct it as I see fit until my superiors tell me otherwise. The general grew angry, suppressing a barely restrainable urge to wring the disrespectful puke's scrawny little neck. Now bring me the biotechnician. The attaché said nothing, but got up, opened the door, and motioned to the next person in line to enter. Um, hi. The biotechnician was clearly not military, and merely an employee of the station. 
He appeared to be a well into middle age, and his name suggested an Indian subcontinent extraction. For the record, what's your name and occupation, son? General asked kindly. Harsha Patel, General, he answered nervously. I'm the chief biotechnician on board the station. Good. So talk to me about the air mixture and crowd biology. Was their air properly balanced for them? Any potential contaminants or irritants in the atmosphere? The general folded his hands patiently and let Harsha work out his reply. Well, um, general sir, uh, the, the cr crowd breathe an air mixture very similar to humans, mostly inert nitrogen, which doesn't really do anything. It's just there, you understand, and a primary oxygen component. The percentages are a little different, but, and the trace gases on their home planet are a little different too. But I, I reconfigured the station to match their preferences, since humans can breathe their air mixture just fine, Harsher explained. Wait, the general replied. You use their air mixture, not ours. Yes. It, it, it seemed to be the diplomatic thing to do. Then I called their delegation's biotech and had him analyze the atmosphere to confirm that I got the mixture right. Harsha looked at the attaché and then back at Whitaker. Um, do you mind if I smoke, sir? Helps me calm down, you know. No, I don't mind, the general began. A filthy habit, the attaché interrupted. Are you smoking when the crowd were here? Maybe that's what put the ambassador in a coma, you nitwit. For his part, General Whitaker glared at the attaché in obvious loathing, but let the question stand. Um, no, sir. Harsha explained nervously, stuttering his words. I wasn't even on board the station, sir. I configured the proper air mixture, got confirmation from the crowd that it was okay, and left for the service tug, sir. I figured it wouldn't do to smoke in the station with them on board. Didn't want to offend the big wigs from the crowd, so I went to have a sick on the tug, where I dialed into the station systems via the net in case anything went wrong. Harsha fumbled for his lighter while the attaché looked on in disgust. Well, it is still a filthy habit for a biotechnician. I'll have to mark that in your file. I've got some pool with the home office. I'm telling you, if we find out you're smoking on board the station with the crowd on board, I'll have you before a tribunal before you finish that death stick. Anyway, Harsha, you said you were monitoring the station from the service tug. Did you see anything out of the ordinary? Whitaker asked, ignoring the attaché's vitriol. No, um, I had automatic alarms rigged to trigger if anything exceeded the parameters sent to us by the grill. And also, trip if they exceeded human parameters. Nothing happened, General. I bore through all the sensor data, and even went back and disassembled the sensors after the fact to ensure that there wasn't any problem with them. They were all new of the line Dynacorp Atmos sensors that I installed and tested just for this conference, so I didn't think anything could be wrong with them, but after the incident, I disassembled them manually, one by one, just to be sure. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So far as I could tell, th there was nothing wrong with the air, sir. Certainly, no chemical attack took place. You understand we will have to corroborate your story with the holologs, right? The attaché answered. So if any part of your story isn't true... It's all true. Please, look at the logs, sirs. I, I wish I knew what went wrong. I haven't slept since the incident. This is a biotech horror story, you know. Uh, I'd fallen on my sword if I did it, General. Believe me, I would. But I can't find anything that I did wrong. Harsha was exasperated and took a long drag on the cigarette. Whitaker thought that over for a moment, letting the silence linger like the technician's cloud of tobacco smoke, curling around the room. There was a piece to this puzzle that eluded him. He prided himself on being a good judge of character, or at least a human character, at any rate. And so he trusted his instincts. Harsha was telling the truth. Every part of his gut told him so. And yet... Did you talk to the Kral Biotech after the incident? Whitaker asked, his thoughts still spinning. Harsha shook his head quickly. No, I tried to, you understand, but he wouldn't take my call. I guess that's to be expected. He probably thinks I did it. Unfortunate. If we could send your sensor logs, maybe he'd spot something that we were missing. Something maybe only the Krull would know, Whitaker mused. I had the same thought, but, um, Harsha shrugged. Well, if you weren't such a feck-up, 
Maybe this wouldn't have happened in the first place, the attaché said acidly. You won't be staying here much longer, that's for sure. I hate smokers, and I hate incompetence that can't do their job. You earn one job, to keep the crowd breathing, and you couldn't even do... Shut up! The general's voice boomed, but the attaché was not intimidated. For his part, Harsha's face went pale, and he fumbled for his cigarette, nearly dropping it on the table. And you, General, your security was a disaster. Maybe I'll have your stars with us. The sector chief is a friend of mine, you know. You do whatever you want. In the meantime, the security detail is my command, and I will follow my orders and conduct this investigation properly, without threatening people who are just doing their job. Jesus. For a diplomatic attaché, you are as undiplomatic as anyone that I have ever met. No need to the incompetent jarheads, General, the attaché smirked, and Whitaker knew in that moment that he would have sold his soul to the devil to wipe that crap-eating grin off the diplomat's face. You can go, Harsha, the General dismissed him. You, on the other hand, he looked at the attaché, can stay right there while I get the next interviewee. Whitaker led in the next man, an older gentleman still wearing his chef's apron. He sat the chef down carefully, casting a warning glance at the diplomat, and sat down himself. For the record, please state your name and occupation, Whitaker stated simply. No, I'm Jeremy Davidson, head chef of the station. The chef looked to be in his late fifties, and despite his European name, looked to be mostly of the old Central American extraction. That was rather common from the border worlds, which was settled by an oddball mixture of old Terran ethnicities. Okay, chef, I need you to walk me through this. Did you, or those under you, Whitaker almost found himself saying under your command, but stopped himself just short of it. Under your direction, cook anything for the Krell. Oh no, never. We were under orders from the diplomatic service. Absolutely nothing was to be served to any alien. I mean, uh, besides the possibility of uh, incapability, what if they didn't like it? No chef wants to start an interstellar war because the steak was undercooked. Let me tell you. Did you know that the tear only eat meat raw? Oh, no. Bad enough to cook for some of the humans around here. Jeremy cast a glance at the attaché. Definitely not cooking for aliens. No, sir. Could any of the diplomats have given your plate of food to the growl? Whitaker asked. The diplomat shuffled uncomfortably in his seat. No. No. Not possible. So we fed our delegation a few hours before the meeting. But you know, I'm a paranoid sort of guy. I guess that's why they've stationed me all the way out in Batfek, Egypt. No, but a plate was left behind. No way I was going to be responsible for that kind of crap. Pardon my French. We collected everything, and I made sure the waiters checked it all out. Jeremy nodded emphatically to reinforce his point. The general smiled a bit, despite himself. I like a paranoid chef. But it is possible that someone on our delegation could have, I don't know, maybe grabbed a piece of food, shoved it in his pocket, and later given it to the Krell. Could your waiters have missed that? The chef rubbed his chin thoughtfully for a moment. Well, I guess, I mean, uh, I don't know what kind of dumb crap would do that, but I suppose it is possible. Waiters ain't security guards, let me tell you. But mayhaps you could check the logs, and they would show you if someone was dumb enough to do that. The attaché grew livid, his face turning red. Now don't you go blaming my people for your feck-ups, General. Whitaker smiled. Just checking all avenues, bureaucrat. He practically spat that last word. My name isn't bureaucrat, Jarhead, it's Charles. Whatever, Chuck, the General replied, at a loss for any other questions for the chef. He asked about the menu. What did you serve our delegation? Jeremy beamed with pride. Well, you know, a lot of stuff. I had a full menu, let me tell you. Traditional North Ham cooking, Italian, even some stuff from home. What it paused. From home? Yeah, man. I mean, uh, I'm from New Texas. We know how to cook a mean Tex-Mex. Runs in the family. The chef smiled warmly. Hell, I'd cook you some right now if you wanted. Anyway, the bureaucrats, I mean, the, the diplomatic service representatives... They had their choice. Spaghetti carbonara with side salad, pizza with choice of toppings, burger with choice of toppings, and my favorite, 
Hard shell steak tacos with chili. New Texas style. Wait a minute, Whitaker paused. You serve tacos and chili to a diplomatic entourage? Jeremy frowned for a moment. Well, no, not really. Most of the bureaucrats just wanted burgers and pizza. No taste, no style. Typical DS reps. Only one of them wanted tacos and chili. Who? The general asked impatiently. Him. The chef pointed at the diplomat. The general shut up in his chair and grabbed the intercom. Get harsher. Yeah, that biotech. Get him in here right now. What? The attaché asked, curiosity overcoming his anger. Just a hunch, the general replied as Harsha scrambled back into the interview room. General, sir, Harsha asked nervously, looking first at the chef and then at the attaché, then back to the general again, clearly afraid. Calm down, son, Whitaker began. I just need your technical advice. Now you said you had warnings set to trip for the atmosphere that left certain parameters. Did any of those parameters include, well, um, farts? Did they include farts? No, Harsha answered confused. If I included farts in the Atma warning list, the alarms would be going off every ten seconds, sir. The attaché said nothing. And you said this uh, bureaucrat ordered the tacos and chili, right? Be certain, him specifically, Whitaker asked the chef. Well, yeah, it was him, and let me tell you, I warned him. He's been having problems, you see, sir, ever since he got here. Sanitation guys had to do some plumbing work in his quarters, if that's all to tell you. They tell me everything, you know, cause, uh, what I put in, they got a deal with on the way out. But, uh, like a typical Earther. There he went, lording it over me. I know what I can handle, he told the waiter. And then, get this, he complains about it, says it's too hot, didn't have enough beans in it, says he knew New Texan style better than me. Make me make him second one. What a load, the ship explained. His hands doing half the telling for him. General Whitaker turned around towards Harsha while the attaché slid back into his chair. What's in a fart, Harsha? I mean, uh, chemically. Harsha laughed in spite of himself. Well, mostly a fart is just nitrogen, same as the Atmo. But you get hydrogen, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and uh, methane too. Jeremy giggled in his chair, but Whitaker was all business. So, uh, that list of homeworld trace gases that Krell sent you. Harsha, was there any methane in it? No, no methane. In fact, that now that you mention it, that was kind of odd. Usually you get some sort of everything in trace elements, but the alarms were set to ignore it. Or else, like I said, the delegates themselves probably would have triggered it. The attaché suddenly realized what was happening. What? What? You think that we did this? Well... The general replied, smirking. The logs ought to tell for sure, but I'm pretty sure I know what they're going to say. And I'm also pretty sure you knew this all along. What? The attaché stood up angrily, spittle flying from the corner of his mouth. I'll make it clear for you, you fucking incompetent, Whitaker said. You fought it on the Kral ambassador, and he nearly died from inhaling it. You arse blasted a fecking alien diplomat so badly, the guy is in a goddamn coma. You dropped a butt quake in the room so terrible, so foul, that even the ambassador's entourage on the other side of his fecking room got sick from it. But I, um, no, I didn't, um, the attaché began nervously. Shut your mouth, moron, Whitaker said. Your arsehole came this close to starting a goddamn war. The attaché fell back in his chair and looked like he was going to die from embarrassment. Dude should have shoved a carb up his cornhole, the chef whispered to Harsha. And you, you're not out of the woods yet either, Whitaker pointed at the chef. Let this be a lesson to you. Never serve Tex-Mex before a diplomatic function. Clear? The chef gulped visibly. Got it. Off the menu right now, sir. Whittaker rubbed his temples and then pointed at the door. The rest of you, get the feck out of here. Now I've got to call the Krull and apologize for a diplomat expelling poisonous ass gas on their ambassador and explain that somehow we didn't intend to do it. And from now on, all Krull encounters are to be suits only. Christ, what a cluster this is going to be. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed.